While charges of corruption in Russian government are nothing new, it's difficult to follow the money with any precision. How bad is it? And how is it connected to Vladimir Putin's rise to power? Is it accurate to describe Russia today as Putin's kleptocracy? That's the title of Karen Duisha's new book and is also the focus of this edition of Rewind. The basic conclusion that I came to in this book is that Russia is not a system under Putin of accidental autocrats. It is a system that was created with a purpose by intelligent design from the very beginning of the Putin regime. The core of the book starts in 1991, and I regard it as the most conservative analysis possible based on extensive interviews uh, of Putin's involvement in illicit activities in the 90s, his efforts to suppress legal cases that were started against him, and the rise to power of the group around him. I've been working on the Putin regime uh, and the appearance of power that I think masquerades this uh, kleptocracy. Um, and I'm interested in the creation of a facade of autocracy, the pretense that one man rules, when in fact what I think Karen DeWisha is showing is that it's a network, and also a facade of democracy because this is a man of the people, this is a, a regular guy, this is a guy who uses tough language, so he must be speaking the truth, he must be authentic. I'm very interested in the ways that was also constructed in the same time period to make it look like he He's the guy. In your book, you talk about the rise of Putin and his career, but really the most puzzling aspect is how he became Yeltsin's successor. Why did Yeltsin decide, of all the people, that Putin was going to be his successor? He was still a relatively obscure person, but when he raised him to prime minister, he not only raised the prime minister, he said he's going to be the next president as well. Right. And no one believed him because Putin was a complete unknown at the time. Well, I spent a lot of time in the book on this subject, so it's half in, half of the book is in St. Petersburg and half of the book is Moscow. So uh, why did Tatiana decide mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he should be the successor? And why did uh, Berezovsky decide? And I think the answer to both of those questions at which they sold to uh, Yeltsin was that he didn't give up Sobchak and he won't give up give us up. I have two questions related to each other. One is uh, directly to you. You named the book Kleptocracy. Why among different features of the system that you have described, like mafia, thugs, KGB, others, you've chosen exactly this particular feature as uh, the most important that uh, just to name the book. The word kleptocracy correctly conveys a normative evaluation. That this is a system that we shouldn't in any way condone by calling it something that doesn't travel, like Sistema. When a book is published in the States, conveying a sense of what we're really talking about here. And the major feature of this system is theft. In Russia, they the greed is much more important to them than the ideology. The ideology is, a, is the kernel that they wrap it all up in, that they feed to the propaganda machine so that people, ordinary people, can feel that they have, you know, that, they, that they're contenders, right? That they could go off and fight somewhere, that Russia is back, and, and so forth. So I, I don't... One, of course, could use that, but also that that whole thing has been now b so debased by the Russia-Ukraine crisis. So that's really why I chose the word kleptocracy. For more information, visit wilsoncenter.org. Click the Programs tab to find additional resources from the Wilson Center's Kennan Institute.